Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new discovery of a very strange and unusual black hole. Now imagine this for a second, you're looking in the middle of the galaxy and suddenly you're seeing something that looks like this. A very unusual but very predictable sudden increase in brightness. And it just so happens that this increase keeps repeating itself over and over and over again pretty much on a very regular schedule with very very predictable results and patterns. So this is what the scientists saw. But what exactly is happening here? Let's discover and welcome to What The Math. So when it comes to studying supermassive black holes in the middle of various galaxies out there, we barely scratched the surface. We only really started seeing them less than 20 years ago, and mostly because the technology wasn't really there yet. Today, however, we have so many different really advanced telescopes pretty much very regularly looking at the night skies and trying to discover what's really happening there. And so very recently, um, in the last few months or so, we've been looking at this specific galaxy known as GSN 069, although more officially known as this right here, a much more complicated name of a galaxy that's roughly around 250 million light years away from us. Now this galaxy is what's known as an active galactic nuclei galaxy, also known as a C42 galaxy. And that's because right in the middle of this galaxy is a supermassive black hole that's always producing quite a lot of energy, but not enough to make it into what would be a quasar or any other more um, energetic object that produces very large astrophysical jets. So here it's active, but not really that active. And once in a while, this uh, unusual black hole seems to increase in brightness by quite a lot. And more specifically, the temperature here increases by about a million degrees Celsius, uh, roughly from about 500,000 degrees to about 1.4 million degrees. And this happens very, very regularly. The scientists whose paper you can find in the description below describe this as roughly around 9 hours per, I guess, feeding event. Here you can even see how regular it is, uh, and all of this is actually very predictable and somewhat unusual. In other words, um, it seems that this black hole seems to have a very large increase in the amount of material that falls into the black hole, and this happens very regularly and with pretty much almost exactly the same mass every single time. It's as if something was manually feeding the black hole. But that's of course not really proof that some kind of an alien species is feeding the black hole. As a matter of fact, there are certain um, differences in those events, very minute differences, but uh, enough to make it a natural occurrence. So what exactly is happening and why is it that this black hole is doing this? Well, first of all, in terms of the actual mass absorbed, it's equivalent to roughly around four moons um, per event, per explosion. So pretty much every nine hours, this supermassive black hole that's right there is going to absorb about four moons worth of material. So let's try to simulate this in Universe Sandbox and let's see what actually happens to the moons that we're about to throw into this black hole. And, um, it, okay, it doesn't really happen like that because most of this material comes from the accretion disk, but that's basically what happens every nine hours, and this produces a tremendous amount of energy that suddenly brightens the whole region by a very large, very explosive flash that even becomes visible from 250 million light years in distance, basically from where we are. And very interestingly, this is not something we expected to see. We've seen these um, predictable patterns before around other black holes, but not so unusually accurate and so unusually predictable. In other words, the previous flaring events, or more specifically two other flaring events we've detected that did have very uh, repeatable patterns, were not as precise. They did not have this unusual, um, very predictable and very easily uh, visible pattern. This one is exceptional. This is just unusual in so many different ways. And because of this, the scientists coined a new term for these types of black holes that we might discover in the future. This is now known as the X-ray quasi-periodic eruptions. This is something that um, we think might happen around other black holes, but we're just not seeing it as much um, in other systems. Now, one of the explanations here involves the actual black hole itself, 
Because compared to the black hole in the middle of our own uh, galaxy, this one here is relatively small when it comes to supermassive black holes. The mass here is about 400,000 masses of the Sun, which is one-tenth of what we have around our own galaxy. So this black hole is still kind of growing. And scientists behind this paper think that maybe this is why we're seeing this. Maybe other larger black holes do this too, but it just becomes kind of more difficult to see because they're so more massive. And so this mass difference is maybe what's causing all of this. So in other words, maybe this is also happening around other black holes that are AGNs, uh, active galactic nuclear galaxies, but uh, we're not seeing it because of other effects and other much larger accretion disks that could have formed here that are hiding all of this from uh, us seeing it. The other explanation involves the accretion disk itself. It's possible that there is something inside of the disk. It might have some kind of an object, like for example a star or maybe even another black hole that orbits the uh, accretion disk or actually orbits the central black hole every nine hours and disrupts something in the accretion disk. And this disruption is very sort of similar every single time, causing about four masses of the moon to fall into the black hole. At the same time, it could also re be related to the shape of the accretion disk. Maybe the disk is shaped in such a way that every once in a while, something gets bundled up and um, at some point destabilizes the region here and essentially all of this matter suddenly um, collapses into the black hole every nine hours. Or it could also be some sort of a star that um, got sort of disrupted by the black hole, essentially turning into little chunks. And because of its unusual orbit or because of the actual uh, structure of the system here with the accretion disk interacting with the star, tiny fragments from the star, possibly relatively similar in mass, once in a while, uh, specifically actually very predictably as it comes closer to the black hole, fall into it, increasing its brightness. So all of these explanations are kind of reasonable, but none of them really satisfy us to the point where we know for a fact that this is what's happening. And because we've only had about 54 days of observation of this system, we definitely need to look at it more and possibly even at other similar systems to try to identify similarities and patterns. Now for now we don't really know if this is just a new type of a black hole, but the scientists behind this paper definitely think so. And that's why they decided to name this um, X-ray quasi-periodic eruption, because this is something that they think might only exist in certain systems. Now we also know that um, each of these eruptions lasts for about an hour, and uh, because it happens every nine hours, it means that there's basically eight hours of silence. There's nothing happening in those eight hours. And this is also something we need to try to explain because since it's an active galactic nuclei, it's a galaxy that has a lot of energetic events happening, why is it that in those eight hours, nothing seems to actually occur? So there's definitely something weird happening here, and this is something we need to discover. But when it comes to the actual precise measurements of every one of these flashes, it seems that the um, actual brightness and also the actual mass of the objects that fell into the black hole decreased a little bit over time. In other words, even though it might have started with like approximately four moons, um, by the time that they looked at the last event, it was maybe about 3.99 moons. So it does seem to decrease with time, and at the same time the length between the eruption events has also increased a little bit. So it is changing over time and it's not really that permanent. In other words, we think that eventually this will disappear. We're just not entirely sure how long this is going to take. Now, for all of this to actually have a final answer for us, we need to now start looking around um, other very similar systems, other AGNs, and discover other similar events. Once we discover more of these events, we'll definitely be able to tell if this is an anomaly or if it's just something we've never really seen or noticed. With time, I'm sure we'll be able to answer um, the mystery here, although for now, it's definitely one of the new mysteries to explore. But anyway, on that note, check out the paper in the description below, and that's really all I wanted to show you. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe even consider supporting the channel on Patreon, because it actually does help me quite a lot. And we'll definitely come back and talk about this possibly uh, in a few months once new studies come out about this particular black hole and about this particular galaxy. But for now, that's it. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.